Welcome to the AR section of Bookkeeper Bootcamp. This is where we're going to understand as much as we can in regards to collecting funds and recording revenue on the AR side of things for bookkeeping. We're going to be understanding the basics of what a company sells, breaking down how to record these goods or services. We're also going to be going over different ways of recording income into QuickBooks Online. If the company you're, you're working with, or if you're the business owner of this company, if you collect funds or revenue in different ways, like checks, electronic processors like Stripe or Square, Venmo and Zelle uh, purchases when they're purchasing the client or your goods or services, as well as owners and investment. So let's get started. Drill number four, what are they selling? So what is this company doing for business? This is where I start. I always want to um, acclimate myself with what a company does. And this is going to be key with almost everything we do in bookkeeping. So we can't, I would say, we can't really push out a very simple frame of this is a cookie cutter a style of bookkeeping for every company. It just doesn't work that way because each business is owned by a different person. Each person wants to run their business differently. So it's really important that when you guys are picking your niche or choosing a customer that you are wrapping your mind around what a company does and how it operates. As a bookkeeper, this will be essential for helping you understand how to serve your client better. So what is accounts receivable? Uh, and accounts receivable in a practical sense has everything to do with how a company that you're working with or your company makes money. Is it gonna be in goods, services, or both? What they sell should generally be kept in the sales section or at a minimum as a, an account on the chart of accounts. If this is a client that already uses QuickBooks Online, make sure that their sales and inventory items are up to date and up to the correct and total amounts, um, or sorry, total sold items and services. What this means is if you're using QuickBooks and their um, directory, the sales directory, directory, sorry, to, <laughs> it's already been a long day, but let's get through this without fumbling all the words, right? So. We want to make sure that all of their products and services that they keep in QuickBooks is up to date. Anything that's not, we want to make sure we're opening it up, editing, and we're going to go through this process together. Uh, we want to make sure that it's hitting the correct income account and what that implicates. So if this company has inventory, you'll need to have a conversation with the company, the owner, someone about getting an updated physical inventory count to make sure that our books reflect the correct totals, right? We've all heard of inventory counts being done at say retail stores or anybody that's selling maybe artisanal items like handcrafted soaps. We need to get that physical count. How our client does it and what they do um, do it with as far as what software is completely up to them. And we can, you can always assist with with that if you want at your own responsible level as a bookkeeper i would say don't venture into realms that you're uncertain of if you aren't sure how to do it you can always ask around ask your community you guys can simply google it but if you're not comfortable with inventory counts or software that has to do with inventory just be sure to reach out to different resources that can help you along the way with that and there's many so now that you've taken the time to understand what you sell, if you're the business owner or what the company sells, you need to understand how they sell that product or service. To be more precise, how they accept payment. This is what we're most concerned about as bookkeepers. Most businesses collect funds from a credit card processing service or cash payments, and this may also include sales tax. In almost every state in the US, any physical or tangible items, something that can be touched, felt, held, um, that a product or tangible products that a company sells will require a sales tax to be collected from the end user or the customer of your client. Okay. And we'll go over that as needed as well. Not everyone needs to pay sales tax. And the sales tax, you know, isn't that isn't too hard, I would say. It's it's not too hard to understand. And um, some states make it a lot easier than others. Arizona, for instance, where I'm in, 
they don't make it very easy to submit your taxes. You know, you want to throw all the taxes at them, say, hey, I collected this money. It's it's here. How do I submit it? Sometimes it's not as easy to submit just because they need different forms. And really what it comes down to with sales taxes, um, understanding how that state accepts st uh, sales tax forms. And it really is that simple. But we'll go over that in another section. So stay tuned for that. But for now, uh, let's move on. Let me move my big head out of the way. And you know what? I'll just turn it off so that you guys can see. <laughs> so learning how to categorize a company's products and sales is a large part of AR. It gets more complicated depending on what a company sells. So a hairstylist, for instance, versus a construction company will drastically differ. In certain scenarios, you may also be recording quotes or estimates. Again, this depends on if a company needs this element of accounting or not. For instance, hairstylists, they won't, but a construction company would. So let's start to break this down with live examples in QuickBooks. So the first one we're gonna start with is examples with the bank feed connected. This is an example that I would say most people that are using QuickBooks Online are being trained with. If you've done the QuickBooks Online Advisor, you already know what to do. Uh, this is the most typical way that people are adding in revenue. And we're going to be concerned with more of the revenue side of things, AR, than the expense side of things for, the, for these drills and for the AR curriculum. So let's get started. Let's jump into QuickBooks. And QuickBooks, to find the bank transactions, you guys just need hover over transactions and then go to uh, bank transactions. Here's where you're going to find all of the connected bank accounts, as you guys are probably familiar with as this happens to be, like I said, the more streamlined way of how you should enter in transactions. So I do end up teaching a lot of students who, um, who end up adding and matching. Sorry, my mouse just keeps auto scrolling on me. So here we're just gonna focus on the income. What's important to know, uh, note, <laughs> Jeez, it's one of those days already. What's important to note is that here on the left-hand side, remembering what each action does. And if you're not familiar, uh, I and you haven't taken the QuickBooks um, classes yet, no worries. Um, I do have a little breakdown that I can add on to this uh, to show you guys. But what you want to do is keep in mind that add means that you are adding a new transaction into QuickBooks that has not existed previously. So not anything that you have entered in yourself before coming to the bank transactions. And they have a term uh, that we will review in the reconciliations portion. But I say manually entered, meaning that we didn't go through the bank transactions menu and enter this transaction, but rather going through the plus new and going to invoice or even um, receive payment or sales receipt, that's kind of a manual transaction entered in by me. Whereas here, when you're entering in something here, when you're adding, think add, enter new, you know, adding additional, keep those terms in mind, QuickBooks will categorize this as manually entered through the bank feed. Okay, manually entered through banking, manually entered through online banking. And what they simply mean is just that we came to this screen from bank transactions and clicked on add. Okay, and I think that there's like, there's a few other ones. Let's just go to this one. There's add. Obviously, there's match. Match is not the one we're talking about. I'm just looking for the other verbatim. So add just means that if you're adding something brand new that wasn't already in there. Match, on the other hand, if you were to click match and there wasn't already a match, it's going to ask you or bring you to another screen to see if any of these match. It might even auto match for you and say, okay, well, you know, this together makes makes 200, does, does that work? Is that the payment? All three of these, are those the payments? Who knows, you know, all three of these together, does that equal what you're doing? That 
you need to be sure 100%. Do not just trust that QuickBooks knows. It's just guessing. And that's what gets us all into trouble if you're not sure on what you're looking at. So I'm going to leave without saving. So we're just going to stay here again. If we're categorizing, we're adding. When you're matching, if you go down below, if you're matching, that's because I'm just clicking on this open space. There's already something in QuickBooks that matches somewhere, sometimes not even around this date, but maybe this amount. And it's saying, hey, we found a match and it's a suggested match. However, it says also this falls between uh, th these dates, but is it not the right match? Again, QuickBooks is not going to always have the right answer. This is why I feel the way I do about AI. It's getting there. But can we 100% trust it yet? No, because QuickBooks and in Intuit, it's just, it still needs that human element, which is what we're here for, obviously. <laughs> so if you're coming into here, you can choose what type of transaction you're going to create. So when you are in here adding new transactions, it has to be a type of transaction. So we've seen deposit and sales receipt like we see it here bank deposit, sales receipt. These are the type of transactions we are creating. They're just doing it through the bank feed. And remember that if you're using the bank feed, this is all reactive. Reactive bookkeeping, meaning that these have already processed through the bank because it's connected through the online banking feed. So if you were to log into the checking account, say this is connected to their Chase Bank, and we actually have maybe the Chase Bank window open and our QuickBooks bank transactions feed open. These are gonna match. So they, they've already left the bank, they've already hit the bank, we've already received money from the bank, whatever. The money is gone, added, and we are now just categorizing. So that's what I mean by reactive bookkeeping. So we're reacting to what it is. Was it a deposit or was it a sales receipt? You get to choose what it was. So. I'm going to stick to deposit. Uh, the new products and service field is now available. So one or the other, you need to make sure you choose. You don't always have to choose a vendor or a customer. And in our case, it's going to be customer. You don't always have to choose a customer if it's not something that maybe your client is tracking. Uh, this would be especially useful for say like service-based clients or hair, like hairstylists. I always bring up hairstylists because it just happens to be one of the industries where I've seen this happen more often than not. That hairstylists aren't tracking invoices or tracking their customers through QuickBooks. QuickBooks is just simply their accounting software. They probably have, you know, a different booking software with their own, with like a third party company that they use on their phones or another way that's just a lot easier for them uh, to manage. And it's more industry forward for them. So it makes more sense and user friendly for them. But like QuickBooks doesn't have that set up for them. So they are not tracking their customers through QuickBooks. They're using a different party. And so in that case, I would leave this customer payee open or vendor even on the other side, I'd leave this open and I wouldn't put anything in there. It's not necessary, but what is necessary is either an account or a product service. So if I don't choose account and I decide to go with the product service, you'll see that the asterisk changes because it needs to be one or the other. It cannot be both. And this is something that we went over in our previous video for the introduction to bookkeeping. So bounce back to that one if you want to know more about the relationship between account and product service. But uh, for this deposit, let's say it was a product or service and it was for design. So now we can choose what service they, they went with or if it was something like a rock fountain, let's say they purchased a rock fountain for $200, it's actually going to take it out of our inventory. So it's pretty straightforward now and a lot easier. And I'm really happy that they put the product service there. It's a lot easier for us to navigate. And you guys can add any attachments that come with it, backup, emails, PDFs, um, agreements. You guys can attach this here because once we do create this, uh, let's make sure we have the date. So today's date. And uh, 
1018. And if you are watching this and you're like 1018 and later down the, in a, another scenario, I'm like today's date 1017. Yeah. I had to come back and re, uh, re record some of these cause it didn't record properly. So you might have a kick out of that. So you, if you just add this, it becomes a deposit. What I mean by becomes a deposit, now that transaction can be found in deposits, let me see, it may not pop up here. No, okay. So those are the recent transactions. I would actually have to go to deposits and look for the deposit for today by going to this little clock arrow. I'm gonna view more. It might not show up here either because it was $200. Okay. So if it's not going to show up here, the best place for it to look for is here. Um, for those of you that don't really take a look at this little section here, or you're not sure, maybe you've looked at it and you're like, I've just never used it. This is where everything goes after we review it. It goes to either categorize or excluded. Nothing can ever be deleted from this bank transactions window or feed because it's already happened. We, you know, if it's showing up in the online banking, it happened. We can't delete it because it is history. But here's where we can find that. And if we just pop that open, you can see it. Um, I don't think I was just going through this with a client of mine. It won't let me actually open this up uh, to look at to look at this, which is something that drives me crazy. But I will show you guys a trick to, to doing it. Um, but again, excluded is if I decide that I don't want to use anything here, say I don't want to use this $55. Um, and um, we could just go in and exclude it. It takes it off of my review screen. So now I have less to review, but it is not deleted it is just here because it wasn't deleted to begin with. We can simply undo it and pop it back in. And now we have it back on a review screen. So to take a look at what we just created, and you're like, how do I get there, Cece? Go to reconcile, open up the trend, open up the reconciliation window. I guess there's a faster way to, there's so many different ways. It's just because I'm here on this transaction screen. This is the way I would have gone for it. But um, I just put today's date, uh, 24. And I just jump in. You can go to the, you can go through the reports, all of that fun stuff. That that is also a different way you can go about it. I'm just going this way. I, if you know me, I'm so upset that they just don't leave this alone. Like, why does this window keep popping up of all the updates that QuickBooks does? Please get rid of these windows. Anyway, I digress. I digress. Okay, let's get a deposit. Um, there it is. Okay, so this is the one we created, and let me minimize the screen so you guys can see it. Okay, here is the one we created from the bank feed. Oh, oh, we created a sales receipt. My apologies. That's why I couldn't find it in the deposits. Silly me. But remember I said manually added from bank feeds was a term? This is a term I was talking about. So a lot of my students and um, just people, I think, get that part confused when I say, did you manually add it? Not from the bank feed, but manually add it into QuickBooks. They're like, I don't know what that means. Um, this is what I'm talking about. When it says manually added from the bank feed, did you do the step that we did together just now from the bank transactions feed? Or did you go through plus new and take, you know, the more um, traditional route, I would say, of how we used to do it. So it's just, it's weird that, they, they wouldn't say like a, something different here because that does get confusing. So if we were to go to in to edit, we can see it was a sales receipt now, which is why I can find it. And here it is. This is a transaction that gets created when you guys click on add. It's not just like floating around anywhere. It created a transaction type and the transaction type is a sales receipt. Here's where it tells us it, it matched online. You can always manually unmatch it if you needed to delete this or edit or void this. I would refrain from doing so unless you are 1000% positive that you needed to unmatch that. Because when you unmatch it, I do believe it goes right back into the bank feed. Um, almost like you undid it without deleting a sales receipt. So that gets kind of 
tricky. So I'd be very, very careful about doing something like that. Um, and if you're going the route that I went to, and this is why I get upset about these stupid squares, it's because if you don't click on that, it pops up again and it'll keep popping up until you click on that. I just don't understand. Make sure you click on close without saving because we're not actually creating a um, reconciliation. I want to make sure that I close out, nothing happens. Um, so if I was to pop into maybe sales receipts, then I could find it. Just giving you guys a quick overview on how these work. There it is. There's a sales receipt I was looking for. So it was as simple as that. I just thought it was a bank uh, deposit. So this is what we created. That's the banking match. It's the same thing we were just looking at. I hope that helps out a little bit. Um, feel free to jump into the sample company and play around with this to get more familiar with the bank transactions, how they work, especially when you're working with the bank feed. Now, this is a quicker way to do this. And this is, again, the more streamlined way. Uh, so you will be able to work a lot quicker create rules when it's more of a simple company. When you start to get into companies that use invoices and deposit forms, things like that, we're going to jump into that in the next few lessons. So just beware of adding duplications before you push add. Another way that we can record using the bank feed is by using the split option. I'm going to get my face out of here so that you guys can see. So say we get this $200 and it is income, um, but it's two different things, right? And say in this case, maybe sales tax is included or some kind of bank fee was involved. Uh, we are going to scroll down. Sorry, I'm trying to go slow so my computer doesn't slide all the way up. And you guys can select split transaction. And what we do from here is we can receive, say it's $200, maybe it's split $150 for the income. So um, maybe not from the person. We can we can put it from said person if if that is the case. Uh, and it's the uh, sales of product income. Um, and then description we can say it was um, product income. Maybe it was a rock fountain. The amount was one fifty, and we can do Amy's again. Select the same customer. But this time the category is bank fee because, um, or actually, I'm sorry, we would go differently. This is kind of what we're going to be doing when we're talking about deposits. But uh, let's go with uh, the other 50 was maybe um, not, a, let's say design, design income. So that one set forth. And now we have a complete zero here. So split transaction is another way where we can put in um, multiple lines for the same amount received. This helps with categorizing and keeping track of product um, and keeping track of just the correct categories and accounts when we're using the bank feed. So you just simply select apply and accept.